Hello everyone and welcome to another Major League Mech Warrior match. This is going to be a week, the final week 5 match between Merkstar Axis of Ignorance and Tikhanov Commonality Armed Forces. Should be a real good show today and casting with me today is Maverick. How are you doing man? Good man. Thanks for having me back here. Definitely good to have you. It should be a really fun match to watch today. Uh, it sounds like Axis of Ignorance actually has a lot of people that work on Sunday. So they're going to be sort of piecing their team together. I expect a lot of normally bench players are going to be in, maybe even a couple of substitutions. So uh, that may definitely affect Axis of Ignorance. And ticking off Commonality, of course, the one of my favorite teams to watch so far just because they are so committed to the brawl. They bring Hugans, three Hugans for the... Um, the conquest drops from what I've seen and then they bring four Hugans and like eight Timberwolves on the skirmish drops that I've seen so if we see more of that I'm a happy man I love brawling be interesting to see if they do decide to brawl this is a map where we've seen some brawler teams work it very well and we've other seen other teams counter the brawling map by position themselves up and no good firing line in the far northeast of the map here definitely and I believe that TCAF they have the map choice and they have picked the upper side I believe if team one is the upper side I'm gonna actually go ahead and pull up the map overlay here um, there we go but basically the upper half in red is a nice choice for the conquest games because it gives you uh, point control you can you can sort of more easily hold on to theta and kappa than they can hold on to epsilon and theta and so it sort of forces them to make the move in this first game you know it's not impossible that um you know Merkstar goes down there and takes theta especially if they bring lights that are more traditional and better in light fights but i think you might see tcaf try to go for an area control strategy here yeah, like Spawn 2, a gamma at the south side, really relies on good scouting by the light maps, uh, light max. When the um, when the team moves out, the, the light lights really have to identify where the opposite team has positioned themselves. You don't want your heavies or assaults uh, moving over to Charlie 3 Hill there at the north, uh, the point side of the drop shed and get a face in a firing line. Likewise, you don't want them over committing to the Charlie 5 east side as well because you're down a hill and it, ability is restricted to the lower portion hard to get back up again you know the point you know definitely gamma or um spawn two really really favors strong strong uh, teams with good light max who can out well but definitely um i think the vantage point really goes to um sigma here to spawn number one the teams that get that really have a um they really have momentum in their favor right off the start of the match Definitely. While this is not one of my favorite maps to play, it is a fairly interesting map for competitive play. You got some sight lines for trading, but, you know, it totally works for brawling, and, you know, TCAF has been notoriously aggressive. We might just see them forgo the caps altogether and just do a straight push somewhere around dropship top side or bottom side, depending on where Merkstar sets up. That it definitely wouldn't surprise me. Interestingly enough, this is actually a very good map um, for learning how to how to do one v ones because there is so much variety in terrain, so much variety of um, of obstacles. You've got great buildings, you've got the drop shit, you've got other passageways. Um, so while it might be very difficult for a team, um, this is a great place for anybody who's looking to get into the one v one matches or even kind of the smaller groups like two v two, four v four. We know Ardai had been doing a few of his um, 1v1 tournaments, but this is a great map to learn on for anyone else who's interested. It really is. Uh, it's just got a nice blend of cover. Like, you know, Lerms can work on this map, but you've also got a lot of cover. And for that reason, I feel like it's one of the most balanced maps in certain ways. You know, I don't think the sides are particularly the most even or some other things are done well, but... The amount of cover and the amount of open space, I think, has a very nice balance to it. Well, hey, if we've got some time before the teams line up, and I think we do, um, we can look at this map. This is definitely one of the maps that will need to come up for a rework. Um, we were talking about just briefly here. One of the areas I want to talk about here would be the Charlie 2, the Charlie 3 tunnel. Um, we have a, a little position all the way through here, which works well for about one to two map, uh, maps if they're mediums or lights to go through quickly. However, we're finding that with the new 12v12 teams that this isn't a large enough tunnel. It 
too long, it's too um, it's too narrow, and it doesn't work in a 12v12 setup. Um, but they could easily do some nice variations. So PGI might perhaps be willing to like, open up this portion here, um, widen it, and also decrease the amount of travel time. That could work. And anything around this side here could be widened as well. That could really help as well. And that could actually um, make this map a little bit more beneficial for 12v12s. I'd also suggest maybe on the portion on the south side here, making it less of a of a drop here so that teams from Gamma can go into it a bit more easily. Um, they could simply take perhaps the uh, the south location on this side here and widen the ramp as well. I would definitely love to see this done. Having said that, it's not exactly high on my priority list in terms of this being a pretty functional map and I think like Alpine and Terra Therma need to get torn to the ground and redone first, but... The Alpine needs a good group work and let's not forget Bog as well. Oh my god, Bog. Down. Yeah. It's the yeah. uh it's the poster child for invisible. Yeah, I gotta say that I'm a little bit confused on Infernium Bog, because it was like, how did you guys not see this coming? One of the biggest complaints we've always had is like mech movement getting stuck, and it's like you put in stairs that don't work, you know, you put in a million things to get caught on and it's like well that's kind of the theme of the map it's like no that's just really crappy like it's not it's not good gameplay like that that's not enjoyable you know it's especially with 12 mechs trying to wander around you're bound to get caught on stuff and you know it doesn't look bad but i definitely think that they could use a patch just to get rid of the crap on the ground they really need it Absolutely. there Absolutely, just a smoothing over of things, remove anything that might get caught. I mean, again, it looks interesting, but you've got to really take in consideration gameplay first. How does it improve game gameplay, 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 and then work on making it look nice. And you know, and, and even getting the community involved. You know, there are a lot of people who are willing to dedicate a lot of time and effort to giving good examples and um, utilize your utilize your friend club right now. Definitely. I'm going to go ahead and really quick switch over to the team overlays just so I can sort of show off the rosters and uh, Farp Noodle's awesome overlay. Of course, Markstar, I don't really actually have any information on their team. Like, I probably could have written something, but I just scraped this from the website and I don't actually have a website for them either. But there is their roster and they would have a team description if we had one. And TCAF, oh, that's right. I broke this somehow, so I gotta restart it. And wow, that's really ugly. I really need to shorten their name, huh? <laughs> okay, well, that didn't work quite as well as I had hoped. But uh there you go. There are these two teams. You know, Merkstar, really a community warfare oriented team, though they do have plenty of competitive players, lots of old uh God, they got players from all over, and I'm I'm curious to see how many starters they're down this week. That's what it comes down to for how much of a hard time they're going to have. You know, they are the fifth. Are they the no? They're the sixth seed, and Tikhonov Commonality is the twelfth. But a lot of those players that got them ranked number six are probably not going to be here this week. Don't know how many. So I'm definitely interested to see how that works, especially if they have to pull in a couple of casuals or someone that doesn't normally practice with the team. It's definitely going to hurt cohesion and coordination. They might have to. You know, I don't know. You just have to not make calls that are going to rattle those casuals and get them off on their own, so. Bill, go ahead without me for a second. I'm just going to have your alls and stuff, and we'll be good to go. No problem. Uh, ticking off commonality in week four. Pulled off a win against 13th ranked Restless Adder, and I'm pretty sure that was a crazy awesome set of matches um i'm pretty sure that series went 2-1 in favor of tcaf you know what let me check the website and make sure because i believe this is the one where tcaf really pulled the yes it was 2-1 it could have been another one but i'm really thinking it was this one where you know they went full brawl like those first two drops they were really and restless adder similarly very brawly team you know they just wanted to slam into each other and, you know, the first two rounds, really close brawls, one went one way, one went the other, and then TCAF pulled a totally brilliant strategy, 
and they just camp the water. They brought like a cataphract 4X with two UAC fives and two AC fives and a couple of banshees in addition to what they normally have. They camp the water like uh, CSJ likes to do. This was on River City, of course. And since Restless Adder had brought a complete brawling deck, we're talking, you know, loaded up with Timberwolves and Fatties, everything with SRMs and small pulse lasers. They just had too much distance to travel, and TCAF ended up taking it. That Cataphract 4X with, like, I want to say six or 700 damage. It was a really interesting, really ballsy play, and it really paid off in spades for him. Well, uh, Antonius Rex just dropped into match, so I'm going to hope that that's actually them. I am trying to launch in the game. It's not happening yet. It's kind of scaring me at this point. Oh, there we go. Okay. They are in match. I should probably put the overlay down, as I occasionally like to do. Antonius Rex. Nav. IUS, not IOUS. Alright, so Merkstar down here in red. They've got three They've got uh, three dire wolves, three timber wolves, three uh no, two timber wolves, a hellbringer, wolverine, two storm crows, and a light complement of fire starters. Whereas TCAF, like always, going with the Hugans for lights. They've got storm crows, they've got uh timber wolves and thunderbolts, and they also have dire wolves. They've got one Stormcrow that's sort of off on its own, but I figure it'll group back up. Merkstar definitely pushing for uh, the Theta Zone pretty hard. They're trying to get this firing line up here. The Hugans are, it looks like they're going for Theta. I don't know how well that's going to work out, especially if the Firestarters decide to compete. But for now, they're not. For now, Merkstar's Firestarters are just sitting at the ridge. Got streak sixes on both teams. Oh. oh. Oh, man. Corey's taking a fair amount of uh, damage. Yeah. He's just backed off. He almost got popped by that streak crow. That's how those streak crows work, man. Just cheesy ass against the lights. And then we have players like LP and their fire starters taking more of the conventional play, but they get a little bit of a range of a little bit more flexibility with that type of mech. Yep. And TCAF, it looks like they're just sort of slow playing it back by their base right now. They're all doing the little trading thing. Markstar's got its firing line set up and they have no intention of moving. It looks like the fire starters are going to probably head behind and cap Theta, I gotta believe. Yeah, LP Magic is going line. for it. Watching like Hans even just sitting back in his uh, Gals dual large pulse uh, Timberwolf, just taking pot shots, and he's so well insulated he hasn't taken any damage yet. But he's already pumped out a lot of damage. He's already CT'd the Echo Direwolf. It's pushing over. Well, TCAF is pushing in now. This is it. This is going to be the push. The Hugans are all going in on the left side. I don't know how well they're going to do against that probably Street Crow UBC Slayer. I'd like to see MS focus the Darvels a little bit better. Their Darvels are about to go down Kilo and uh, Delta there. We see Slayer takes down, I believe, one of those Hugans. We got Kilo Darvels about to pop as well. He's here at knees down. Yep. Markstar, definitely. That firing line just eating TCAF's push alive. They're very spread at this point. Um, and it looks like there are only about four left for TCAF. Yep. This was a pretty decisive match. Mark Star just a great firing line. He yeah, hence just went down, but he's had a lot of time to dish out a lot of damage. This is a cleanup time for the rest of them. Game. So sure enough, that first game is gonna go to Mark Star. Looking at those damage numbers, two, one player on each team doing zero damage. 
Uh, that was the Firestarter LP magic. Maybe he was just capping Theta the whole time, and I don't know who Divine Evil was uh, on TCAF's end, but you definitely see Markstar pulling the much higher damage numbers. Lots of guys over 500, lots of guys over 300, 400, you know, whereas TCAF, you know, pretty average 100s, 200s, only one person over 300, just not going to be able to carry the round with that big of a damage disparity. Absolutely. It was really good damage done by both te um, by the MS team there. It was a fantastic firing yeah. line. They they really they really set up well, and I think that TCAF needed to not make that approach. That was the that was the approach that Merkstar wanted, and you can't just walk in front of the firing line that they've set up. I mean, even if you're going to push and do your own firing line, I just think that's a very I don't know. I'm not quite sure what they're trying to do with their their Hugens and their uh, their scouting with their light max, but that was just uh, they had the advantage at the start, but they kind of gave it away. Yeah, I mean that is one of the big problems with going with Hugens for lights is I don't think they could really keep control of of Theta. You know, they had a street crow come down and almost one shot one of them. The fire starters would have, you know, beat them in a light fight. So it's like it's really hard to control the cap game there. And therefore, it's very hard to control the pace of the actual game itself. Um, the next drop is going to be skirmish 720 tons. Same map. Should probably get my friends Bill. list up here. Bill, what's your delay at five minutes here? Yes, delays at five All minutes. Right. Um, and if you want to give away McBay's, you know, whenever, make it happen. Sounds good. I'm just watching the stream going live for the viewers. So we want these people to enjoy the match. And right afterwards, we'll do a McBay giveaway. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and get on map tactic here and uh, do a little doodling. Probably get the map overlay up if I'm going to. So, pretty standard, pretty textbook, not a whole lot going on. Merkstar in blue uh, took their fatties around here and just set everybody up there. Uh, Firestarters are doing a little scouting by Ridge, but they eventually returned to the pack. Um, and then later on in the match, they did end up going to take the data. Hugens for TCAF went down here. Uh, one of them, again, got opened up really early by a Street Crow Alpha. They did make it out of there, and then TCAF just sort of balled up their main force around there. And at some point, they decided to just sort of push into that firing line. The Hugens actually went left, sort of up by Bravo 4, and they got here, and they all engaged like a, like, I, th I feel like it was a Street Crow. If it wasn't a Street Crow, it was still a lone Storm Crow, not an ideal target for SRMs. Those SRMs really need to be doing work on the Dire Wolves. That is what the Hugens need to be doing in a drop like this. They have to be focusing that assault and putting out a lot of damage. Yeah. I just think it got too pushed and or uh, too split, and then again, Mark Star. That's exactly what they wanted. This was this was what they wanted to shoot at right there, and that is exactly where uh, TCAF walked into. Just uh, just a meat grinder kind of place. I feel like they would have been a lot better off going through the city, uh, popping out from two or three lanes here instead of you know giving well, they them the over. They they came over this Charlie 3 line that knows the drop ship, and they had people just um, had the um, MS lines just waiting for them uh, in the purple below. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen. They got kind of distracted, I think, with lights and didn't focus on where the main body of the uh, of their opponents were. And so their fire line went versus fire line. But when they had a few guys peeking over initially with the dire wolf, not exactly the best oh, peeking wow. back, those guys got oh, wow. hit pretty hard. You're right. I didn't even see how far a lot of those guys were out of position. You're right. A lot of TCAF sort of shifted over. Got really up. out, unfortunately. Yeah, and you saw that last contingent balled up there. Um, so yeah, just uh, not a not a coordinated push on that one. Definitely got a little bit messy there. Down at the bottom. But, you know, once everything moved around towards the tail of the dropship, that whole fight, fight just went crazy, like you said. Yeah, it was just so... It could have worked out. I think it could have worked out for... Um, they had pushed a little bit better. But I think ultimately what it was is just a lack of information. 
definitely. Well, we'll see how uh, that goes in this second round. TCAF now again is going to pick the drop zone. And they are going to be burdened with having to push. Uh, I don't think that's really a problem. And I sort of get the impression that we're probably going to see the all Timberwolves and Hugens deck. If I had to put my money on something, that would be it. All right, we're doing the mech bait giveaway. I'm just going to see who gets the first random number. The random number is 87, so we're watching RT2D2 is 79, Legal Pirate 34, Army 122, Old Hassu is 55, Xerox is 69. Xerox, really? Seriously? 69. Gory 33, and we got Vonka with 73. Still waiting for the guys. We got MW Twitch 57. This is like the mini game. Uh, the chat stream. Vodka was 72. Old House is 21. Still waiting for 87. Seeing what's happened with these guys. No numbers yet. This is what PGI ought to do in the queue. Make you guess numbers to win stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Now we're getting a lot of... a lot of. We got a close one with Old House here at 81. Very, very close here. 94. I mean, the faster you put in your numbers, you know. The win on 87. <laughs> no one's got 87 quite yet. <laughs> I love this. We got Xerox with 99, Alhasu with 3, Duck Arena with 73. There we go, we got Kitty Cat with 87. Kitty Cat, the winner. Yeah, our first winner is Kitty Cat there. Congratulations, Who's sending Kitty, Kitty Cat, Cat, Cat. Kitty Cat. Yeah. So I guess I might as well mention the other scheduled matches. Um, let's go check out the calendar. So big fun one. Everybody should be watching it tomorrow at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It's the winner's bracket, Imperial versus 228th Black Watch. That's going to be a good match. Um, one of the two winner's bracket matches happening in week six. So be sure to check that out. We're going to best of five now in week six. So it's going to be a longer series. And we start on my favorite map um, this week with Tourmaline Desert. Likewise, Antari Scorpions and Seraphim, they are playing a week six elimination match. Again, best of five, and that's going to be on Friday at 8.30 p.m. Still waiting for CSJ, SJR to finalize their schedule and waiting on the results of this match for QQ versus the winner of this. I think that's going to be a very... Um... Very anticipated match in SGR and CS CSJ, especially now that we're actually looking at a at a forest city or what do you call it? Ah, oh, keep frozen city. I mean, that was an epic, epic uh, match of infamy, Mogadon in history. It'll be interesting to see what happens in this next match between the two. Definitely, um, it was a. I still need to go. I keep saying it's a great match, and then I keep forgetting to go watch the end of it, but. Uh, Ron Hot or Die had like a, a best of five between CSJ and SJR a couple of weeks ago, I want to say, and it definitely went to all five. I didn't get to see the last one, but it was 2-2 when I left. Really close matches, really exciting. Just two great, really even teams. They're excellent teams. Both teams have been around for a long, long time. A lot of players. The... Some of the guys are even back in the mech where two days with me. I just really Let's like having now. CSJ around because they, they sort of have their own style. They're like, we're just going to play the kite game, and this is what we like to do. They can do other stuff, but they have a specialization, and that's, you know, they, they sort of play that way. And I appreciate that. Like, I appreciate TCAF for just, you know, balls in on the brawl. They are definitely impulse deep when they go in. <laughs> Hugens for lights. I love it. <laughs> Those things are no joke. I mean, if you're in an assault mech and you get a Hugin on you... Those things are just these rapid-fire shotguns that do tons of damage. At the very least, you're going to lose a leg. I believe they've just launched in. Things. Yes, they have. So. All right, match Both two. Lay, Let's go take a look. So. I'm reloading. Oh, geez. Controller. What do you mean, controller one disconnected? Don't. You're just going to keep reconnecting and disconnecting? That's 
Wow, that's... Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, so, Merkstar, uh, in the red again... Um, they're somewhere. gonna go Hellbringers, Thunderbolts, and Firestarters. That's it. It's ECM, it's Wub, and that's about it. And uh Hugens, Timberwolves, Stormcrow. Maybe just like one Stormcrow for TCAF. TCAF is definitely good in their brawling builds. They've got SRMs, they've got machine guns, they've got everything good for close up. This is and, gonna be a huge um, brawl. Absolutely. Nemesis is going their more typical route, typical builds. We do a couple of Thunderbolt uh, 5S's, 7 Seven pulses. medium pulse. Oh, it's all medium pulse. I'm pretty sure this is going to be an all-out brawl. I don't think either of these teams have any range. Nope. <laughs> Lots of Thunderbolts here. Watching Lego Pirate and his EBC, EBC Slayer as well. Yeah, it's going to be a medium pulse uh, showdown between Mark Star moving versus up. SRMs. They are cresting they right go. now. They're going to crest fairly spread out. Hands Davion way out in front, but they're not focusing him. TCAF now split on both sides of the dropship a little bit. Their focus fire not doing so great. Dead hand for TCAF is going to be the first one to go down Whoa. that Timberwolf. And T or, yeah, TCAF definitely split up right now. Aziz. They're definitely doing the rotation game. They're rotating counterclockwise onto each other. They're just Right now, we've got TCAF coming over the city bridge. We've got like a... Or on Rambu. 2 1 2 2 now. 2 2. I feel like the focus fire is going Merkstar's way, but now I'm not so sure. They are now split on two halves of the dropship. Wow, this is Absolutely. a close match. It's 3 to 4 to 5. 5 to 5. The Hugans oh, are man. moving really well together on the south side of the dropship, and they're just about to take up kinetics and the Thunderbolt there. If they do a good job there, they can really clean it up. Yeah, the Hugans. The Hugans are always ignored, and they are one of the things that ends up winning it a lot for TCAF. However, they're going to be uh, pretty alone here at the end. Yeah, it's still pretty tight here, the four, four and five right now. We got Ziov having a one-on-one uh, -on -one match with LP, but he's disengaged and help of his teammates. Oh, he got yeah, split he, there a little bit long. Oh man, he goes down, so it's just two left for TCAF, and I believe this might be it. Last one, check check up AP and his Timberwolf, the last guy up, last man standing. LP Magic kills himself trying to get the kill. <laughs> and that's the end of the match, that was closer than the last. Very close match. Great brawl, I think that Merkstar had the early advantage, and even though the numbers got a little bit even there, that ultimately they were always basically up a mech or two in that fight, even just in terms of damage. Yeah, T kept just a little bit of trouble with focus firing there. They they had some good points in the match where they could have maybe swung around, but just seemed like they couldn't get quite enough damage at the right time to take out mechs fast enough, and their Hugans lingered on, a, on like, I think it was like four mechs at one point on, on MS's two mechs, and they just couldn't get it done quick enough and get back to help the rest of the team, at which point the rest of the team kind of just went down, and, and that kind of turned the hells back in uh, MS's favor. Having said that, Hugans, look at them damage numbers, just like always, they're almost at the top of TCAF's uh, team, you know, and Paul Gadling certainly almost up to 500 that last Hugan alive so definitely pulling their weight you know I think that again MS just with that first push over hill TCAF was split early you know almost was it like four and eight something like that and that first Timberwolf just got eaten alive down way too fast same with a couple of the other ones so I'm going to ask if they are going to it out. Again, it's just a bit of organization. I think the um, the Hugans can work a bit harder, but they were spreading damage a little bit. They weren't lagging as quickly as they could have. Maybe it's difficult because you know SRMs are a bit hard to aim. Um, but I think if they were just a little bit quicker, those Hugans could have done a really good job moving into the pack that they were moving and taking on a few mechs a little bit faster there. Definitely, the other thing, too, is when I you aren't that... rotating. Go ahead. Sprinting off ahead in the line. Um, I noticed in that little with TCAF, they started to sprint off and they started to create a long, strung out line. Sometimes when you're leading the push, it's good to move, say, about 75 of your max speed so the guys behind can catch up to you, too. What ends up happening is you end up rotating, doing the sort of uh, um, the record player maneuver. And then what happens is the opposite team says, goes full stop, creates a firing line, and faces you. 
And then you end up having a straight line um, barely into like a firing line, and that's not so good. That's a counter to the whole rotation. Definitely. Well, I guess let's review this on map tactics. Absolutely, and we'll be having a, a mech bait giveaway after this too. So, um, <laughs> about five minutes. We're gonna, we're gonna let everyone enjoy the match here, and then we'll be doing the doing the next giveaway because we got round number seventy-five. We'll see who's the first person to guess it. But let's go onto the um onto the map tactic and take a look at what's going on. And I just got word from Antonius they are not going to play the last one out. And so, you know what I think, Mav? I think we should do a pubcast for the last one. We could do a pubcast. What do you think? I, I think we got to. I think there's there's no question. <clears throat> Ugh. All Let's right. take a look at map tactic here. Yeah, so let me make sure I get the right overlay up. Okay, I do. So, uh, TCAF down here in blue. Um... They balled up by dropship, and they were about there when the real engagement started. Markstar early on, balling up there, and basically just doing the straight play over Ridge. They had one guy that was over early that I thought was sort of gonna get focused down, but TCAF rotated immediately uh, around to respond to that one Timberwolf got caught out really early he just got completely wrecked by their entire team not much he could do and there were a couple others that were sort of lingering back here um, and I think that really it was just that initial push and it was very hard to recover from for TCAF because you know just like everything else in this game when you're down a mech it's just very hard to come back unless they make some huge mistake and just play well, like NASCAR that. And I like how I like how they were rotating initially, and they're trying to find it. But ultimately, uh, MS, uh, whoever the drop caller basically said, "Hey, stop, guys! We've got a good firing line. We're at the t we're at the top of the dropship here. It's a great area to be to stop it." And they did stop engaging. It worked really, really well. They did have a couple guys who were caught out. Um, they had like a kinetic in his timber in his thunderbolt at the, at the tail of the dropship, but that's okay. It gave enough time. Uh, he actually, uh, I think, took on like uh, four of the light, uh, three of the light mix, and maybe one other of the heavies of TCAF, and that's fine because if you're if you're folk, if you're occupying like four max for one person, it means the rest of your team's handling you know eight max with their eleven max remaining. That worked out in uh, MS favor. Don't underestimate a guy who can tank very well. You know, there's always going to be one or two players who push hard, who lead, who lead the way, and they absorb a lot of damage. They're hard to put down. They may not put up big numbers, but they're occupying time. And if their uh, time to kill is much higher than everyone else's, that gives the rest of your team all that extra time to focus the other team out. Simple numbers. It's a really easy game that way. You know, it's absolutely true. Uh, I really do wish they had like a sort of damage taken or time focused or some way to track like. How much attention you were sucking up on the battlefield because you know sometimes it's just like well you made a stupid peek and you got wrecked by everyone on their team so that was totally useless thanks man but other times it really is like four guys were shooting at me for about 20 seconds and that's huge you know if you can draw that many people's attention for that long and keep alive um you're, you're doing a real service for your team Absolutely. So we're going to do our mech bay giveaway now. So I'm going to announce to the crowd. We all know the number in advance because we're five minutes streaming. So it's number 75. We'll see who's the first person to get it. Sounds uh, sounds pretty awesome. So um, geez, do you want to just like pick a name from like a friends list and just watch something random? Or do you want to like ask in chat for somebody to podcast? Yeah, I'll take a look at my friends list after this map big giveaway. So far, we've still got a lot of six and sixteen. Oh, to be very... You know what? J Man just launched into match. I want to see J Man. <laughs> his learns. sixty-three viewers right now. Wow. We got Smadi yeah. with ninety-nine. Hasu is fifty-five. Zerix is sixty-six. Old Hasu is seventy-seven. Close guys, close. We're looking for seventy-five. Who's first? Lego Pirate is four hundred thirty-five. I think Lego Pirate is really good at reading instructions. Obviously, <laughs> the, best. Okay. the best. Come on, guys. One to a hundred. And you should launch on J Man. Because uh, he just launched into a match. It hasn't even started yet. That's what I'm podcasting. Yeah. I just want to see him be a dick with LRMs. All right. Well, J-Man it is here. Super Smile, J-Man. You're famous. Good 
go waiting for someone to choose 75 guys for one more mech bay. And then we've got another mech bay giveaway after J-Man's match here. So come on, guys. And actually, I'm going to call it right now. Uh, basically, the person that wins the last mech bay is the one that guesses the closest to J-Man's uh, damage number. I think that's how All we right, should do this. Good. I think yeah, J-Man's damage number, and you only get one guess on the damage number. If you guess more than once, you are disqualified, so don't do it. Still waiting on the number 75. We haven't got it from the... Uh, Still waiting on this match watching. to start. My god, how many disconnects are there? <laughs> oh, 74, so close. Old Hasu. So close. Oh my gosh. 65. Will he do it? 86. 85. There we go. The Hasu gets it. Ooh, Hasu with 75. Congrats, old Hasu. <laughs> All right, well, perfect timing because I believe the match is starting. It make It's making noise. Yep, it's making noise like the match is starting. And so. Let's see, there's going to be, I don't know, you know, this is obviously just a pug game, so there's going to be Team J-Man and Team, you know what, Team Bear Claw. Bear Claw was in there calling me uh, Putin Jr. yesterday, so clearly he watches the stream, so. Yep, and J-Man and a Warhawk? What the hell, that is not a hunchback. I am, I'm almost furious right now. What is that? Well, he's got Lerms at least. <laughs> At least he's not disappointing me there. So, uh, as you see in most pug games, they're getting really spread out. Um, J-Man just loves to do his own thing. J-Man just loves to wander off on his own, even in assault mechs. And has a knack for somehow not dying and getting everybody else killed. Red team going through the valley right now. They're going into Echo 6, Echo 7 up there. It looks like blue team has rotated far enough right that they're not going to hit them, though. Nobody is occupying the stage. For whatever reason, everybody has totally abandoned it. There is a fire starter that got into the game late. I doubt he's going to get caught out alive, but if he does something stupid, he will. Blue team finally moving down here. I, God, are they going to chase him into the canyon? Pro tip, kids, Canyon is a terrible place to be. This whole section, you just don't want to be here. Don't go down here. Just stay up top. Be smart. Remind them it's only one. Yeah, good. <laughs> one guess only. <laughs> uh, you got Kylie Corey in this uh, gridiron. I don't know if this is just a slow gridiron or I don't know. Whatever, it's a pug game. They're all spread out. Nobody knows what's going on. A lot of them have gone down here in Canyon. I don't really know why, but that fire starter is pretty alone if all those mechs turn the corner. And red team just snaking up into oblivion. I have, I don't know. They do have a decent firing line looking down on that corner though. This is actually not a bad... Well, it is now that they're backing off because they've been shot at, but that would have been a good firing line if they would have kept it. You got some lights coming in. Commando 1B, Firestarter, Raven 4X, putting a little uh, harassing damage on. And sure enough, the whole team, all the blue team, is back down in the canyon. I, I really think this is a terrible spot. Uh, UAVs are up, probably one for each team, I want to say. Is that on both sides of the ridge? Yeah. Mav, are you in on this game? <laughs> I am watching it right now. I'm just watching J-Man and his Warhawk. How's he uh, doing? What's he doing? With... He's doing here, right? He's got his four medium lasers, and he's running actually a um, a dual arrow M15, dual arrow M10 Artemis. It's a pretty hot mech. Some people run like um, very similar to uh, Jaeger 12's um, version, but he runs four LRM 10s. And they're sitting there at the base of Fox Truck 6. They're trying to shoot up a valley. They're pretty much in a kill zone right now. Hopefully, our team can organize and start to a push. They really need to focus up onto their assault mechs and have the assault mechs lead their way out of there. J-Man's already CT'd at the moment. And his right horse is also cored as well. Yeah, down to 58%. It's not looking good for him. Most of red is pushed behind now. Of course, that is what you do. You sit up on that ridge. Looks like blue has a contingent force that finally pushed a little bit left, but then they got some other guys spread way right. This Hellbringer is going to go down. Arc Wielder at 29%. Oh, that was a nice strike. Look at that. on his rear. A great strike. His right torso is already orange. 
one of the things with the Warhawks guys, remember that most of their weapons lie on the right torso. So focus that right torso and you'll do just fine. And J-Man is down. Right after blowing 40 grand on that UAV, that was the most expensive death I've seen. Alright. Right. Well, it looks like the the team on that's pushed left is, has sort of stopped, has blunted the advance and given these guys down the canyon some time. But these guys in canyon need to get the hell out of there and do something useful. They do. I mean, there's some actually, I mean, some salt players. We've got new Paladin as far, you know, far as our A, and he'd really like to get into the match. But right now, it was his position won't allow him to really help his team out. But then you've got some good players too, like Ultra Lucian and, and, and Zeb J and King Crab and Bear Claw making their way around. So they just got better position on the guys that blow up and care about these stuff and battle these guys. If you don't want low ground, you don't have, you don't have to have it. Yeah, I thought this. Has already taken three down. I thought the summoner was pop tarting, and he is. He's pop tarting with streaks at like 300 meters. <laughs> oh man. Hey, he's in a great location. You know, you got his range. He just has to jump up. Yeah, he's getting a full hit right onto that banshee there. These guys are just reversing. His poor can grab and rent. Has nowhere to go, and he just reversed. Now he's going back forward. He really does look like Austin Powers are stuck in the stuck in the tunnel way. Yep, and this right, is now just he's moving up. Yeah, this is just a classic oh. example of canyon bad. Get it through your heads, people. Canyon bad. Don't be be in the canyon as, you know, don't just don't be there. Just get the hell out of the canyon. Go up here. This is a good spot. Go up here. You know, this is a decent spot. Everywhere down there, just a death trap, and you see it at work right there. Absolutely. Let's take a look at J-Man's numbers, and then we'll find out who the winner is the last mech bay. I'm going to guess, like, what? 250 something maybe okay. 277 not bad so let's scroll back here and see i'm gonna go find the winner is right no now. one guessed low enough that that means everybody knows that j-man <laughs> is a god but no this time not in his that hunchback so we do who's closest then because i'm just looking here we got 412 350 with old has to one dollar, Bob. Uh, Seventy-five for Lego. Yeah, nothing's really close. Yeah, that's the thing. No, no one was even close. I guess. I guess. I mean, I don't even want to give it out for that. That was sad. You know what? Let's let's get on a different match and try this again. That was harsh. I just, uh, it's terrible. When you're a support mech like that, and your team decides to do something wrong, what can you do? Well, you know, to be fair, we should go with the, uh, I think it'll pass, well, it'll pass one, two, so we're left to... Th Alright, well, let's give him a chance to call it out, and then we can give it away, because we did announce and stuff, okay. It's, it's true. I guess in the meantime, is there anyone else we're spectating for one last one? And then I gotta get me some food. You throw me more mod than I can actually, uh, I can actually type a little bit more without getting spammed here, buddy. Still looking for somebody to launch in. All right, man. Well, let's close here. We got a Hassie who's close to that 350, but he just won the last mech base. So it's up to you, Bill. Do you think he gets the second one, or do you go oh, with the man. next closest? That's 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 tough. I I don't like coddling. I like winners winning, but you know what? We Whatever. He he was the closest. You know what? I'm not Fair gonna. Enough. I. 
whatever. I'm not gonna just because he's better than everybody else. I'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna help everybody else. That's right, other viewers. You got to compete. Think out of the box. Somebody could have just bid one dollar. Well, actually, probably not. It's three fifty. Maybe that's what we should do. Maybe we should do prices right guessing where it's the highest yeah. without going over. We could definitely do that for the next match, Bob. Definitely could do that. Plus, we're going to have some MC giveaways. So as we get into the final semifinals, we're going to have 500 MC giveaways. So not only mech bays, but, but the MC giveaways. I mean, we're definitely going to need a little bit more uh, people. Get your, get, your, uh, get your guesses out there. We want you guys to uh, enjoy watching, but we also want you to, uh, to participate. Definitely. Well, I'm sort prizes, of hoping so the CSJ funny. launches. I'm watching Energy sit as like a group commander. So, Matt, have you got anybody on your friends list that you think is uh? Be a win Let's see, right. on. We've got Grabuski. We're about to have a bunch of the um, bunch of the CSJR guys, a bunch of the um, Smoke Jaguars about to drop into the match here. Okay, who should I spectate on? See when they're dropping into it. I should probably add a bunch of SJR players. I feel like I actually have like. Sorry, the CSJX guys. I was mixed mixed up. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I guess while we're doing that, for anybody who missed it, uh, it will be on YouTube. I should probably get the last week's matches on YouTube as well, but um, did go to Merkstar. They will be moving on. TCAF is eliminated from the tournament, and Merkstar will be facing QQ probably sometime this week. I'm guessing maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Depends on what works best for both teams, but my guess is they will actually play this one during the week instead of on a weekend. Hey, wake up. Hey, wake up. <laughs> yeah, probably a good idea, because I don't see anybody launching at this point. Well, I was hoping we get one more good podcast thing here, and but I don't see anybody launching. So, yeah. Um, let's wrap this up. It's a good set of matches. Pretty brawly. Just came down to focus fire on Markstar's team. Or side, I think, and that's about it. Thank you, viewers, uh, for watching. You know, couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you, Mav, immensely for being here. It always makes it so much easier. Well, thanks and... for having me, and we're definitely looking forward up to the uh, to the week six matches. Um, or is it week seven? Actually, we are going to have EMP versus two two eight. I mean, the top teams as well SGR and, and Clan Smoke Jag again top teams as well and the loser bracket we're going to wait up for Antari Scorpion and Seraphim great teams as well and uh, now we're going to have uh, MS versus QQ the loser bracket you know these semifinals and um, later matches are really line up really quickly um, we're going to be right into the finals in no time Definitely just a few weeks left now. Uh, it's all best of five from here on out. Be sure to tune in. It's going to be longer matches, more prizes. As Mav said, we will start giving away some 500 MC packs in addition to Mech Base. So, so a big th shout out again to all the different leagues out there, to our friends on the Reddit forums and so forth. Um, shout out to PGI for, again for all the uh, all the prizes that we get to give away to you guys, the viewers, and keep uh, keep subscribing. We really appreciate it. Definitely. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will catch you later.